This is lesson 1.4 from your text, Solving Equations. And our goal today is to be able to create equations and inequalities in one variable and then use them to solve problems. So first we're going to refresh on how to solve basic equations and then we're going to indicate whether they are always, sometimes, or never true. So let's start with example A. And in solving equations, the first thing you want to do is look to collect all the variables on one side, which they are, and then combine like terms. So we combine our, I like to draw a little squiggle line down the middle. 6a and 5a is 11a. So 11a equals negative 11, and then to solve for a, we want to isolate the variable, get the variable by itself by doing inverse operations. So the inverse of multiplication is division. So we're dividing both sides by 11. So a equals negative 11 divided by 11, which is negative 1. So then we need to indicate whether this is always, sometimes, or never true. In other words, is there any other value that we could plug in to this equation that would make it true? And there isn't. It is clearly always true. That'll make more sense when we see some examples of sometimes and never. So then the next question, we have a 6R and a 6R on the same side. Again, there's only variables on one side. So we'll start by combining like terms. 6R and 6R is 12R. To isolate the variable, we do PEMDAS in reverse. So if you recall, PEMDAS is our order of operations. When we're solving an equations, we go in reverse. So we would undo addition and subtraction first. So we'll add one to both sides. Makes a zero pair, so 12R equals 12. And then divide both sides by 12. So R equals one. Again, this will always be true. We'll just put an A for always. Similarly in C, 8M and 13M combine our like terms. We get 21M equals 42. Divide both sides by 21. M equals 2. Again, this is always true. Anytime we get just one exact solution, it will be always true. In example D, it gets a little bit more complicated here. We see that there are variables on both sides and we have parentheses. So we have to distribute the 8 to get 32K. So 8 times 4 is 32. And then minus 8 times 4. So that's 32. I'm going to run into different problems here. Uh, then we combine like terms. We can't combine any like terms, so then we collect all the variables on the same side. So I'm going to add 5k to both sides. So 37k minus 32 equals negative 32. Trying to get k all by itself, the next step would be to add 32 to both sides. So that equals 0, and actually negative 32 and 32, so we have that same thing happening on both sides. So we get 37k equals 0. Finally, divide both sides by 37. 0 divided by any number is 0, so k equals 0. An exact solution, always true. Next, similar to... Example D, we will distribute first. Make my little squiggle line down the middle. 8 times 1 is 8. Let me squeeze it in here. 8 times 5x is 40x. That's okay. 40x. And then plus 5. Be careful that you only distribute the 8 to the values inside those parentheses that are directly next to it. We could combine our like terms here, 8 and 5 is 13. Nothing to combine over here. 
burning a K. Collect our variables, subtract 5x from both sides. So we get 13 plus 35x is 13. Subtract 13 from both sides. Trying to get x all by itself, doing reverse order of operations. So 35x again equals 0. So once we divide, we again get x equals 0. Always true. Last one. Collect the p's. Collect the variable. So we'll subtract p from both sides. So we get, actually it cancels out on both sides. So we wind up with negative 4 equals negative 9. And finally we have a situation where this is never true. Negative 4 will never equal never negative 9. So since our variables canceled out on both sides, we wound up with a false statement. So we can write never true. Example 2 gives us some practice in solving equations for a given variable. So when we have only variables, practicing solving. So looking at the formula for a uh, rectangle, finding the area of a rectangle, we use the formula A area equals length times width. And to solve for W, we want to get W by itself. So just as we would do if this were a 5, we would divide both sides by L. So then we could write this as W equals A over L. And that would really come in handy if we were given the area and the length in a particular situation and trying to find the, the width. For a parallelogram, the area is base times height. And so we're being asked to solve for B. So similarly, we would divide both sides by H. The H's cancel out. So our, to find the value for the base, we would just divide the area by the height. Next for a trapezoid, so first step would be to just go ahead and write the formula. Even though it's right there to the right, I still want to write it out in the context of my work to make things a little bit easier. And this time I need to solve for A. And you can see this one's going to get a little more complicated. So I'm going to first get rid of this H right, by dividing both sides by H. So now I have A over H equals A plus B over 2. To get rid of the 2, I multiply both sides by 2. Now I have 2 A H equals A plus B. And again, going back and checking what I'm solving for, I'm solving for A, so the last thing I would do is subtract B from both sides. So in the end, the A value, what you can see here is the um, length of the base, the longer base there. Uh, A will be equal to 2 times the area times the height minus the base. Kind of like solving a puzzle. And lastly, for the area of a circle, area is pi r squared. These are good formulas to know. Area equals pi r squared. To solve for r, this one's actually a little bit simpler than the last one. We divide both sides by pi. So r squared equals area divided by pi. And then the inverse of squaring is square rooting. So square root both sides. And so now we know that the that cancels. So the radius would be equal to the square root 
of the area divided by pi. Finally, example four, solve for x. So in these questions, similar to the last questions, there's, there aren't very many uh, constant terms or coefficients. We have a lot of variables involved. So looking at an x here and an x here, somehow we need to collect those x's. And the way to do that is recognize that x is a common factor. So we can actually factor out the x, and we're left with a plus b. So when we divide ax by x, we're left with a. And when we divide bx by x, we're left with b. So that's how we wind up with this expression. And then since a plus b, the quantity a plus b is just being multiplied by x, we can divide both sides by that group, a plus b. So x equals c divided by a plus b. Solve for x. So we're still solving for x here each time. So you might realize um, doing reverse order of operations, we would add 5 to both sides first. So x divided by a equals b plus 5. And then we need to get rid of the a. This is x divided by a. So it's important to recognize that this fraction line also means divide. So then we would multiply both sides by a. It's really important that you include b plus 5 in parentheses because we need to multiply the entire side by a. So then these cancel out. x is equal to, and we typically would write that a in front. So x, we could write it in this way, but that's not fully simplified. So I want to write that as x equals ab plus a5. And the number goes in front of the variable, so 5a. Last one. Solving for x here. So the way that we'd want to do this one, rather than start by distributing, which might be your go-to thought, let's get rid of the two-fifths first. And to get rid of two-fifths, similar to what we talked about in the 1.2 no notes, we multiply by the reciprocal. We multiply by 5 halves. Because the number times its reciprocal is 1. So then we're just left with x plus 1 equals 5 halves g. Just subtract 1 from both sides. So x equals 5 halves g minus 1. And that concludes our notes for 1.4 solving equations.